All right, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about one of the most important concepts in either sketching or you know proper drafting of a of a of a drawing, and that's what we're going to call xing and doubling. And it's the concept of how can we create things that are equal distant back into space, or double it, or quadruple it, you know, and 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 do and you know keep doing it that way into space correctly in perspective. And the answer is xing and doubling. Again, it's one of the best concepts we can learn. Now, remember, I have mentioned, and if you perhaps don't remember, I will mention again, that anything that we can create, or anything that works in flat space, two-dimensional space, also works in, in, in three-dimensional space or perspective drawing. And so, this is the concept of how Xing and doubling works, and it's all about the magic of diagonals. Diagonals are just so great, and they give us so much information. And again, they're usually not used by the novice because a lot of people aren't teaching this stuff anymore. This used to be like, you know, taught in the in the trade schools and junior high and, and high school and all that sort of stuff back in the day. But these days you don't hear about it as much, unfortunately. Um, that's coming back. That's changing, and there's a lot of stuff on the internet and YouTube where they're using some of these great concepts that used to be taught on a daily basis 50 years ago. It's crazy. But anyways, in fact, you might even have to go back 60 years. But anyways, if I go ahead and mark, X marks the spot, and I create a diagonal going from each corner, like so, and if I then come through the middle of that, if I come to the middle there with a straight line, like so, and let's say we're going to double this over to the to the to the right. Again, we could take this line straight out and straight out that way, and take this line straight out that way, and this line and this line and this line are all parallel. That's very important that this middle line that we're going to use to double over to the right is parallel to these two lines, okay? And the way that this will work if we're doubling to the right is we're going to come from this corner, and I can actually come from this corner too. I can either come from this corner here or that corner there, and I could, and then you come from where this hits the outside, right there. And if you, if you do that, let's do that right now. Line it up to the corner, come through the middle, use my, maybe we'll use this one, and we'll come from here, and where that strikes, this line here, that's where we draw the line straight up to be that next rectangle. I could also, and it should hit the exact same point, but I can come from this corner, as long as I pass through that same, that middle point, and this is kind of far away from me, I'm having a hard time seeing if this is lined up correctly. Looks like I missed that just a bit. So we go from the corner through that midpoint, again, so that hits that line, and it strikes that line right about there, and again, we go ahead and take and draw a line up from there up. And now what we've done is we've taken this rectangle and doubled it over. And we've done it through our Xing. That's the Xing part. You know, hit it to the outside where this line goes and hits the outside. That's where the diagonal needs to come through. And again, this has doubled this over. Or you could call it mirrored. It is mirrored. It has mirrored that, that rectangle by using that point. Okay. Now we still have this line right here, and I want to point this out. If I use this point, and I came, again, from this corner, not this corner, because if I came from this corner through that point, that would double both these over and make four equal rectangles. And we'll show you that in a second, but I'm going to cut, jump to this corner here, and we're going to go ahead and again, line that up through there. 
and then line that up through the, or passes through there. And again, we're going to go ahead and bring that out. Again, that hits right there. And again, we've doubled this over. Okay. And we'll just go ahead and mark that out. One, two, three. We've doubled, we went ahead and replicated this to here, and then we took this and replicated that to there, so we have three equals. And what would happen, again, I said, what would happen if we went from this corner through that second point? That doubles both of these. So you can actually use this to start what we call doubling space. We're not going to work on that a lot right now, but just to, and just to show us what's going to happen here, I'm going to use my red. So if I come through here, through that point, I came from this corner, and I went through that second point, which is, you know, this is twice as far. So it took these two here, it took these two right here, and it doubled those over to give me two more. Now I've got four. If I came over here to where this point, well, I, I didn't draw the line yet, but let's say I did. This is the outside. We've now doubled double these two because we didn't come through that one. That just doubles the single one. If we came through here, this doubles both of them. So now it doubles, and this is now four. Now, the other thing that we could do is what would happen if we, if we came from this corner through this point right there? We're not going to do it, but if we did, we'd have to also make these longer. But you would then you'd basically double over those four, and, and you'd have eight. Eight times as wide. As, so it's a really great concept. We're going to use it as, for single doubling right now, just doubling the original rectangle. But you can take it and do all kinds of stuff with this. If I wanted to double this down... Vertically, it's, it still works the same way. We would take this line through the middle. And again, this, this line is, is a vertical, and it has to be parallel to my other two verticals. It's got to be a true vertical. Go ahead and take that through. Came a little longer than I wanted. So now, what we're looking for is not this point, but where this hits down here. This is the point we're looking for right there. And then we would have to bring, we'd go ahead and have to bring these on down here. I'm going to bring this down here. This isn't very sharp. I'm going to use a sharper one. There we go. So we bring these lines down. And again, how would we finish this out? Well, we come from the corner through this point until it hit here or there. I could come from either corner. I could come from that corner through the middle, or I could come from this corner through that middle. Doesn't matter. They should hit the same place, unless I don't, you know, unless I don't go through the same point. You know, if, if I go through the middle of it with one but kind of miss the middle with the other, well, then they won't line up. But if we went ahead and said, all right, oops, that's missing that middle just a bit. All right, there. That's better. Still missing it just a tiny bit. That's a little too much. There we go. So bring this down like so. And now again, we can do the same thing from here. And again, they would hit the same place as long as you got, again, a sharp enough pencil. And with that pencil, we're starting at the same place, which would be right here at this corner, going through the middle. That's not quite going to the middle. That's still not quite going to the middle. That's still not doing it. All right, I was way off. There we go. Um, that's starting there. Okay. And again, if we've done this properly, this is actually hitting this one you know, right down. That's where that hits. There. And this one is hitting there. And again, we could go ahead and close this out. Like so. And again, by doing that, we've replicated this rectangle. Now you do the same thing going up. You go ahead and take this point, go from the corner through there until it hit these lines being extended. It would hit those extended lines. So we could go up with it. We have to just have to go from the corner opposite the point. So opposite this one, we came from these two corners. Opposite this one, we came from these two corners. Opposite this one, it would be these two corners. If I wanted to double it to the left, 
Well, then we just bring this over that line. We then would continue these, you know, horizontal lines going over to the going to the left. And then what would we do? We go ahead and mark where this hits the outside. Take that through there until it hits here. Now, let's ask me ask you this: What if I went through this point? Well, if I went from this corner through there, that's gonna that's gonna double this over, which this is half. So that would be I wouldn't get anything from that because I've already got the full rectangle. But if I went from this corner through there to here, that would only double this half. So again, I could go ahead and take half of this and double that over by going from this corner through that point till it hit again up here. We can even do that just to show you if we want to double, let's say I just want to double half. For some reason, I want just half of this rectangle doubled over. That's how we do it. We go through that point and by doing that, we've now doubled over just half of it like so. So this is now, you know, this and this is the same. If I wanted the full rec this full rectangle, I have to come from this corner through that middle. And again, now we can, because of this, we can start dealing with symmetry and all kinds of things. This gives us all kinds of stuff that we can do using perspective because this not only works in flat space, it works in perspective space. So how are we gonna do this? Well, we're gonna go, we would go ahead and start with a horizon line. And so let's grab this. Now, I can barely see if the line is here. Just give me a moment. Because it's to this side of the ruler, I can hardly see it. But I know you guys will be able to see it better. So that's why I'm doing it like that. So you can actually see what I've just done. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna soften this a little bit as this passes through where we're going to do the or draw the telephone pole. So I'm just lightening the line a little bit. Now this right here is our horizon line. We're just gonna go ahead and give ourselves an HL. Yes, you guys should be very familiar with this, but I always try to keep it clear. Even when I'm sketching, if I'm just starting a sketch, I'll guarantee you, it always helps, especially if it's gonna be very complex. And when you're doing illustration, a lot of them are very complex. And so it helps to be clear about what you're doing, especially if you're creating landscapes. If you're just creating something from nothing, again, you're gonna be very clear about what you wanna do. So the next thing we're going to want is a vanishing point. All right, so we'll take this up and we'll just use a one point vanishing point for now. So we'll take this, we're gonna create a house. We're, gonna, we're going to do the same thing, but using a two point perspective set up. Let's see if we can try that again. I was off just a little, the littlest bit. Let's bring this over here. There's only like half a line, a line width, but I want to be clear where we're going. And then we're going to take our, we're going to decide, I should go ahead and decide right now. Let's do this how I would normally do it. We go, okay, well, I'm going to, have to, I'm going to have a line that's going to be the front of my rectangle. This is going to be a flat plane, a flat horizontal plane. And I'm going to say, all right, well, this right here, and this right here is the width of that plane, and it's gonna be going back to my vanishing point. And I'll just go ahead and put that this is my VP right there. And you know, sometimes I'll have people like, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to put down my definitions. I'm not gonna, you know, mark this stuff, I'm not gonna put the letters down for whatever reason, and invariably they have more problems than those that actually put this down. It's all about getting it in your head. Now, do I always do it this way um, if, I'm, if I was doing just a one point like this? No. But if I was doing something where I'm like, okay, I'm going to create a cityscape and I'm going to use multiple vanishing points and I'm going to have, you know, all these different things going on and I need measuring points and reference points and all this sort of stuff, you better believe I get very, very fastidious because you could have 16 different vanishing points on your horizon line for different things. And so you want to make sure you don't get lost. And again, it really helps when you're doing something complex. If you're just doing rolling hills in the desert, you can fake that pretty easily. But if you're doing a street scene with some monster, you know, lumbering down the center of this city, and you've got buildings and cars being thrown around and all types of multiple vanishing point situations, yeah, you've got to go the extra mile. That ain't going to be, you're not going to be able to fake that one. 
You're, you could try to fake it, but it wouldn't come out very well. Um, so again, we're gonna take this to the vanishing point. And then once we take it to the vanishing point, I need to decide how far back does it go. Now you can probably see that I've already got this a little lightly drawn in here. But, and sometimes you would sketch it and then you'd be like, okay, now I'm gonna darken it and I'm gonna double it properly to make sure that it was correct. But whichever it is, we're going to go ahead and use this process in perspective. Well, the first thing we have to do is X marks the spot. So I take this from there to that corner, like so, and from this to this corner. Now, this doesn't even have to be, this can be any sort of rectangle. This is not a square that I've got here. Um, you know, it's just, it's too, it's too wide to be a square. So I just want you to understand that this, this is just a rectangle and that's okay. But we're going to take this from the, that corner to this corner down here and create X marks the spot. Like so. And we've got our, our middle. I had to recent, I, I put this on a different board and so I had to reposition it. And it looks like I missed it a little bit because this did move the center a little bit. But it's, it's like, again, it's a, lot, it's a space of a line. It's not going to be a huge deal, but I'm calling your attention to it just in case. So I was like, hey, 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 what's going on there? Did you see that? Well, yeah, let me know what's going on. Okay, so we put this in the middle, line this up to the vanishing point, take this back, like so. All right, and then this is right there. This is where that touches that back line. I want to fold this over. So we're looking for where that center line, this right here going to the vanishing point, is this center line. And this, this line, and this line, and this line, they're all parallel. How do we know they're parallel? Because they're going to the vanishing point. Any line that goes to that vanishing point is parallel. So we've set up this exact same scenario in perspective. And now all we need to double this over is to take this from this corner through that point so that hits the, the line. So we've gone from this corner through that point till we hit here and that there is our next step, that rectangle doubled over in space. And so we take this and we take our, take our nice dark pencil because that's why we've got the dark pencil. Go ahead and use this thing. It's all good stuff. And we'll go ahead and put that in right there. And then we're gonna go ahead and mark where this hit the line, right about there. All right. So we doubled that over. Now, we don't know what this distance is. We said it's a rectangle. We don't know what the distance is. We're, but what we do know is we've taken this and we've doubled it. It's the exact, this is the exact same distance that this is. It's just this is further from me. We're doing perspective as those spaces go further back. They're going to foreshorten. And that foreshortening is going to make these get smaller and smaller and smaller as they go back into space. Again, I can't tell you how. I can't emphasize enough the importance of this concept. You can use it, you can use a lot of time if you're going to do anything that you're measuring things like a car. You could say, well, this actually represents three feet. So that's six feet back and that's nine feet back and that's, you know, 12 feet back. You just keep, and you can start to replicate things back into space in a way that's where it's accurate. This is fairly accurate. Now there's certain ways that are a little bit more accurate than this. If you don't get the point right on the exact points, this starts to get a little off very quickly. I mean, it's close enough for hand sketching, but if I was doing something where, you know, I had to conform it to a certain, like an architectural rendering or something, I'd be using a different method that's just slightly more accurate. But this is accurate enough for even if I'm doing something like it, it just has to be a building. And that building has to, there's another one that's the same width, the same, you know, whatever, the same depth is behind it. Or let's say the yard is three times as deep as if this is, let's say this is a house and the house is whatever, 40 feet deep or something. And the yard is three times, that's 120 feet deep. So you, you go ahead and replicate this three times and that would be the back of the yard. You could start to, again, build something by starting to say, hey, this, is, this equals so many feet. And then you can say, well, this equals so many feet. If that's 40 feet, maybe the house is an 80 by 40. So I double it this way. And then I'd have a house that's 80 by 40 feet with a yard that's 120 feet you know, back and all this sort of stuff. You can start to all of a sudden deal with measurement.
in a very sophisticated way. So to get this next one, I don't, I came from this one from here through there till it hit there. And I need to be consistent with my colors. This right here, this blue line probably should have been a red line since I've been using this red for the, for going back and the blue for the Xing. So this is, should, should have been red. But now we're gonna double this one over. So I'm gonna start from this point right here. And we're going to go through that point there. Again, this is, this is pretty simple. Once you get used to it, not that big a deal. As long as we don't get lost in terms of what corner, through which point, and so forth and so on. Now this went beyond that halfway point just a little bit, and so it pushed my line back into space more than it should be. So this should have hit, yeah, right about there. That's much better. And again, this would, and again, that's supposed to be red. <laughs> I keep using this blue. Oh. But, um, doesn't matter. It should have hit right there. And then we'll take this. And that right there is in the back of that square. And again, we could keep doing it. What about the next square? We'd have to, well, then we'd have to jump over to this point right here going through there till that hit there, right? And then we go, okay, and then we draw that next line. And we say, all right, and then we come from this point through that point to that hit there. And you come over. And you just keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. You would just go, okay, yeah. All right, well, we wanna go ahead and double this back. We come from this corner through there until it hit there. And you just keep going back and back and back. And I've got these where I've gone ahead and done that. And we'd end up with something that would look about like this. And they would get smaller and smaller and smaller. Back here, they'd be so small, they'd almost seem like they're one line because that's so far back. So this is, you know, this is how we want to do that. Let's say whatever that distance is, let's say it was wider. Well, if I had the same, like if this distance here was the same as that distance there, or this was like a grid, so that we, these are the same distance as this, the widths, that's the same width as that, or this is not this is not the square over, but let's say we want to make it wider, and this one is the same as, as that. In other words, if this is my middle point, right, I, I could even take a mid, I could even take a line through there. All right, we'll take that line through there. And this is supposed to be my middle, so where that cross is there. And then how do I know where, you know, this would be the same, or this would be the same width as that. How are we going to know that? And we can go ahead and you could use, um, we could do this with mirroring. We're not going to mirror. We, we talked about mirroring in, in, a, in a different part. We're not going to get a ton into it. But I can go through this one, through that midpoint till it hits here, and you actually get both sides are then mirrored. Most, both sides are then symmetrical, same play, same spacing off the, both sides are now equal because we use the center point coming from a corner and it doesn't really matter that's not what we're here about is to deal with the with the mirroring part of this what we're here to talk about is that if this shape right here let's go ahead and so again this this shape implies because of the way that we use the mirroring that these two are equal, they're not equal to this, but they're equal to one another because we used a central point. Okay, we're not, we're not, we talk about that more in another one, but the, the deal is, is that if this is still the center point for this larger rectangle, that's what I was trying to get at, that if this was the, say this was the street and this was the sidewalk or something or what have you, um, I don't know why there'd be divisions in the, in the, in, in the street, but if that's street and this is sidewalk or whatever, but this distance is the same, and this is still its middle, well, then you would say, all right, well, this is then, they would they would share the same, you know, they'd be diminishing. This distance here would be diminishing at the same rate. So this is the same distance as that. The width doesn't matter because it's still their, their equal distance off that center point. So once we're equal distance off that center point, like so to so, pardon me, I don't know what happened there. But if we, again, if we're equal distance off that, off our, off our center point, like, you know, like that, looks like this somehow did not still stay, I must have missed my center when I came through there. Yeah, that got weird. Um, 
So either I missed here or I missed there or a combination because this will start to get kind of dicey very quickly. It would have been easier just to go ahead and measure this that away like so and then take that back because it has to be, this has to be the center in order for this to work. Um, but again, if this is again that, and now this is the same right to left, that's the center. But the idea is the same that these then these divisions, these diminishments would be the exact same. There's times, this maybe would not be one of them, but there's times where you might use a smaller diminishment and then extend it for some reason. Um, you don't often do that, but there's there's a couple times you might be like, oh, I'll make it smaller. Because let's say this was you know super wide. I'm like, why don't I just do a smaller one and then I extend it out so that I get because what we're getting is basically you're getting these diminishments that these grid lines here or these diminishment lines are the same distance going back and back and back into space as if I was going to start to create a grid on this ground or these are big tiles of a cathedral or something. So anyways, this is on the horizontal plane. Now we can also use it for the something on the vertical plane. So if this was, you know, again, we got a vertical set of telephone poles. And again, this is, we're going to use this for the distance between the telephone poles. You know, so we'd say, all right, that right there. And I don't know, what if this was like a, these are pretty short telephone poles if this is five feet, but let's say this was eight feet and that's 16 feet and that's, you know, or maybe this is 10 feet. So that'd be 10 feet, that'd be 20 feet. I like that better, so these are 25 feet. So we'd say it's a 10 foot eye line or something like that. And if that's a, a you know, a 10 foot eye line, well then again, because these are one, two and a half, that means it's about 25 feet, thereabouts. Again, we don't have to be, we're not, doing an, an actual to scale. We're trying to get a sense of scale, but we're not being so exact that we're, we're gonna lose sleep over it. So, if this right here, let's say this is going back again to our vanishing point. This here is going to the vanishing point. Now we're going to use center lines to go through the center of these poles. And usually this is how I'd start this. I'd start with my with my plane. And then after we have the plane defined, well then we would define where this, you know, where this pole would start. Say it's going to start right there. Well then we draw this line. And then we have to make our decision on the next line. That would go there. Now it looks like my, again, I, this got moved, so it's not, it's not lined up like the way it should be for that vertical line, but we're gonna use it anyways. The next one that makes this decision, we have to have that second line. We have to have, where is this gonna hit? So we have to have these corners in order for this to work. Now, I don't know what this distance is. That's, that's the only, Part about this that could perhaps drive you a little bit nuts is I don't know what this this distance is between these two because we're going back into space but whatever it is I want to double it over now you could say well I don't know what if we envisioned it in an ellipse or if we you know visualize this tipping down if by by thinking about that we're like boy that doesn't seem like that's even more than 20 feet if that between these between these telephone poles. So most telephone poles have more than 20 feet between them. They might have, you know, 100 feet or whatever. In which case, if this was 20, we go 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, and these would have to go away, and this would be my next telephone pole, and you get quite a bit of diminishment. But we're not worrying about how far do we space these right now. You will in the future. Right now, it doesn't matter. We're just gonna take whatever this is, we're gonna double it over. And how are we going to double it over? We're going to do it exactly like we did with these other ones. We're going to take the our little, we're going to get our blue little pencil here, and we're going to mark corner to corner on this, like so. And then going to mark corner to corner on this. So again, this is no different than the, the horizontal ones. It's just that these are, are are oriented vertically, 
And then we'd go ahead and take this back to our bashing point. All right, there, through there. So we take that to the vanishing point. And we now have that this right here is the center, and we're going to have this pass through this part right there. And you're going to take this from this corner through there until it hits that point. So let's do that. We'll take this from this point through there until it hits this line going back to the vanishing point. And so this right here is my next one. And then to do, you, you know, you go ahead and go, all right, well, from where that is, we drop that straight line. So we drop a line straight through there. And so we're going to go ahead and take this, and get through, take this line, come up, whoops, come up through there like that. Huh. I've got one of my boards that isn't cut square, and I think this is it. So the bottom of this, I'm not going to use this anymore because, yeah, I know the side of this thing is straight. The bottom, not so much. So that's not that this didn't tape down right. It's that the, the board that I was, I was using the bottom of this with a T-square, and that's what was pulling this off a little bit. But anyways, you would keep doing the same thing. So for this one, we'd come from this point or that point. We could come down if we wanted. And you'd say, all right, well, we need to double this over. Where's my center line? Well, it passes through right there. And so we'd go, all right, come from this point through that point to where that hits like so. And again, it should be the same. If I came from this corner through that point, where should, where's that going to hit? It should hit the, the exact same place. Unless, again, we miss, like if this isn't, like that's not quite in the corner, if this isn't going quite through the middle, well then yeah, it's going to change some things. But otherwise, if it's the same, it should hit the exact same place, which is right there on that, on, you know, on my two lines. And then you just bring this line straight up through there, and you have the next telephone pole. And again, we to put it to the net to go to the next one. What we, we do, we go, okay, we're gonna take this corner, this corner, through there, until again it hits this line, which is gonna be somewhere about there. So again, we take this through that point, right there, through that point, right there. And we go ahead and we take that. And then we go ahead, let's try that again. We're gonna go from this point through the middle, from that point, through the middle. Oops, missed a little bit, missed that one a little bit. That goes through the middle there, this goes through there. And again, we'd end up with a line that's about here. Okay, so you keep doing that on back and you get lines that again are going to get closer because of foreshortening. That's what this is doing. This is helping with the foreshortening between these telephone poles. If this distance between these telephone poles are the same as it goes further and further, and further, and further, and further, and further back. So you, you, you keep doing this, and you see how close these are getting. These are, gonna, these are gonna finally start to feel like they're sitting right on top of one another as you start to get back here. These are gonna start to get so close, and they're gonna keep getting closer until they start look like, looking like they're standing right on top of one another. Um, so again, this is we're doubling this over as we go back. And we could then just take these and develop these in tele into telephone poles. And so I could say, well, hmm, what am I going to, what's the width of this? And I'd say, well, let's see, I'm gonna make the width about yay wide. So you, you draw this one telephone pole, become your master telephone pole. And I'd say, well, this, this thing, this telephone pole is about that wide and that wide. And you could take those back to your vanishing point. So you have the width of those telephone poles as they go back because they're all supposed to be about the same height and we're going to keep these straight these telephones are not going to be leaning back and forth like so many telephone poles do but that's why again when you're sketching these by hand you try to you know bring some of that the leans that are going to happen naturally in telephone poles you start putting them in there because it's rare that telephone poles are ever truly standing up straight but you could bring this back and since these are on one point you can say all right well let's see where this hits here that's the top of my telephone pole this, that's the width because it connects these two these two lines I just created going back to the vanishing point. And again, when I came to, to this one, well, it didn't have to connect, you know, those two lines going back to the vanishing Anyways, you could connect these two points on this line going all the way back, and you could, again, start to 
create these into telephone poles. So I'm going to go ahead, we're going to do that in quick time, and so I'm going to go ahead and draw these in quick time using our, using our, our lines here for our, our diminishments. All right, so this is Xing and doubling. Again, go ahead and try to look for this. We're going to be using this from now on in perspective and other uh, sorts of applications for drawing cars and bicycles and you name it. Um, it's a great method. Again, we can double on a horizontal plane, double on a vertical plane. And even if we had a plane that was at a diagonal, And we said, all right, well, this is our diagonal, like so. Again, we could double this over. Even though it's on the diagonal, we could double it by using X marks the spot and taking the center line down to the vanishing point because, again, this is still parallel to that vertical plane parallel. It's, in terms of its lines are parallel. No, it's not parallel. It's not the exact same plane. But I'm saying that the lines coming off of here are, are parallel to the vertical plane, the horizontal plane. The parallel lines, remember, they don't care about vertical, horizontal, or even diagonal. And this is a good example of that. And again, to double that over, we come to the middle where this hits that outside, come from this corner or this corner, go through there till that hit the next one. And we find out, because I already used one of these um, that's, that, we, that we've set up, then it's gonna go ahead and it's gonna work. So this one we already have, that that's where it should have hit, and it did. And from there, we'd go ahead and make this just truly parallel to, the, to, the, to these two uh, lines there. And again, we would then have this same, this right here has now been doubled over. So go ahead and practice this, give this a shot. We are gonna talk about this in, in many ways um, in the future. And even in this class, we're gonna use it for drawing a house and some sidewalks and some different things. But again, it's a really powerful method. And again, use it. Um, it's, it's, it again, it's, it's the best method for sketching and creating depth and doing you know formal depth and all that good stuff. So um, we're gonna, again, we're going to go ahead and say goodbye for this particular lesson. I appreciate you for joining me. And go ahead, keep practicing, you know, keep up the good work. And I uh, hope you'll join me again for another one of our perspective uh, drawing classes. And until then, keep drawing, stay creative, and bye-bye now.